No matter how much evidence there is that black holes exist, they nonetheless belong to the world of theoretical physics. They lurk in the shadows as a result of their characteristics, including their design, the absence of light in their natural state, their location, and their mode of operation. Although traditional black holes are perfectly viable mathematical solutions, not all scientists, including renowned physicist Stephen Hawking, believe that they are essential to the framework of modern physics. In fact, some go so far as to argue that we should replace them with one of a number of alternatives. Quark stars, wormhole hybrids, and gravistars are few of these choices. Carlo Rovelli of the University of Toulon in France and Francesca Vidato of Radboud University in the Netherlands introduced a Planck star, a hypothetical entity, last year. It is more of a rethinking than a replacement for the conventional black hole idea. An event horizon and the singularity itself make up the two primary parts of a black hole of the classical form. It's quite simple to understand what the event horizon is, it's the boundary beyond which nothing can enter or leave. Contrarily, the tricky part is the singularity, or the heart of a black hole. Within this endlessly dense point, the curvature of space-time also becomes infinite. As a result, we are unable to infer what actually occurs within a singularity. Even worse, our solution seems to violate a number of fundamental laws and rules. The main concern is how black holes manage information, namely information that details the quantum features of all the matter they consume. Information cannot and should not be destroyed, according to physics, but if it is pulled into the irreducible singularity, it actually is. We'll discuss the significance of this paradox, sometimes known as the black hole information paradox, in a moment. The Big Bang hypothesis, on which the Planck star is predicated, contends that the universe is set up for an endless cycle of rebirth and death. In other words, only this version of the universe was created at the Big Bang, not necessarily everything. A separate universe occurred before ours, one that saw enormous size expansion, contraction, collapse, and rebirth, sort of like reincarnation on a cosmic scale. If you prefer, picture that one line from closing time on repeat forever, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. This bounce is thought to be preceded by a crunch, which is thought to be the antithesis of the Big Bang and depends on the universe's expansion ceasing at some point, especially when the average density of space-time reaches a critical point. All matter in the cosmos would be brought back together after the collapse, returning to a superdense state, perhaps coalescing into a black hole-like singularity, similar to how the universe started out. According to the working theory, the bounce would occur after the matter is compressed to Planckian-sized proportions. They contend that by revisiting what the big crunch would involve, we may be able to learn more about how black holes behave. They ask, what if, instead of core collapse supernovae, which is how we think all stellar mass black holes form, collapsing into infinitely dense points, singularities, the collapse is prevented from happening by a quantum pressure like the one that prevents an electron from falling into the nucleus of an atom, as they put it. The concept itself isn't wholly ridiculous. Neutron degeneracy, after all, may stop the collapse of stars up to a certain mass, leaving neutron stars or pulsars behind, while electron degeneracy accomplishes the same thing for stars that are as massive as the sun. To be fair, white dwarfs and neutron stars are very different beasts. They assert that, on a larger scale, this quantum effect would imply that the bounce does not happen when the universe is of Planckian size, as was previously expected, it happens when the matter energy density reaches the Planck density, instead, the universe bounces when the energy density of matter reaches the Planck scale, the smallest possible size in physics. Naturally, if one of these things existed, it would have an absurdly small diameter, even when compared to an atom, of about 10 to 10 centimeters. It would still be considerably greater than the Planck length, which is equal to 1.61619926 10 to 35 meters, by about 30 orders of magnitude. The consequences of temporal dilation would affect how a Planck star would appear to an observer, and this is the really fascinating part. Time does not flow consistently for everyone everywhere. 
Though the difference is small, it moves differently on Earth's surface than it does in low Earth orbit. When we travel well beyond the most massive stars and planets, into orbit around intermediate to supermassive black holes, objects so dense and with such strong poles, nothing, not even light, can escape, the rate at which time ticks is really thrown into a loop. In fact, time dilation starts to drag on light even before it reaches the event horizon. Although some of the brightest minds in the world have proposed that time practically comes to a full standstill, we can't be sure of this, to emphasize, we don't know what happens within black holes. Yet from the outside, nothing seems to be wrong. If you're having trouble understanding, just recall the aquatic world from Interstellar. Spoilers, what was an hour to the inhabitants on the ground was years, decades even, elsewhere due to its proximity to Gargantua, the black hole slash wormhole the group passed through. It's likely that the female astronaut had only been there for a few hours when the second batch of astronauts arrived, despite the fact that the first person had landed on the planet about 10 years earlier. Although her pulse beacon was still in operation, no further communications were being received. Even so, a Planck star of this type might only exist for the length of time it takes for light to traverse across it before it bounces. But from a distance, it would seem to continue for millions or even billions of years, coexisting with the black hole itself. You might be asking at this point just what physicists perceive in this incredibly theoretical model. In the end, it returns to the contradiction involving black holes and information. The pair asserts that the dilemma would vanish if we replaced the singularity with a Planck star. They assert that after a certain amount of time, the black holes will eventually collide with the expanding Planck stars at their cores, at which point all of the information they once contained will be expelled. Black holes slowly lose mass over the course of their lives through the gradual emission of Hawking radiation. What else? Theoretically, Planck stars may generate a measurable signal of quantum gravitational origin around the 1014 centimeters wavelength, they claim. In other words, by searching for specific gamma ray signatures, it could be possible to identify one or at least limit it down. In fact, it's possible that we have already found their signature and are only unaware of it. While it might be assumed that such a repulsion would act swiftly to stop a star from collapsing, it turns out that the Planck star experiences a comparable excessive amount of time dilation due to the relativistic effects of the object's tremendous gravity. The rebound from a Planck star takes around 14 billion years to appear from beyond the star's Schwarzschild radius, thus even primordial black holes are just now beginning to appear. Additionally, it is possible to calculate the emission of Hawking radiation to match the pace at which gravity affects slow down time, clarification needed, so that the event horizon that makes a black hole dissipates as the rebound process advances. The main characteristic of this hypothetical entity is that this repulsion begins much sooner than one might anticipate and derives from the energy density rather than the Planck length. Even before singularity forms and, in fact, before the Planck scale for distance, this repellent force is potent enough to prevent the star from collapsing. There is enough space for all the information recorded inside a black hole to be encoded in a Planck star since it is estimated that a Planck star will be significantly larger than the Planck scale, preventing information loss. The fuzzball, which similarly eliminates the singularity within a black hole and accounts for a mechanism to retain the quantum information that falls into a black hole's event horizon, is a fairly equivalent phenomenon postulated under string theory.
That was for today. Thank you for staying with us. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel.